just eat less food. Thank you for watching. But seriously, I'm not going to waste your time because if you've clicked on this video and you already know it's about what you eat, then I believe this will really help you because calories in, calories out, it works on paper. But I believe it's a little bit more complex because I used to really struggle to get down to that really, really lean physique, that movie star Brad Pitt in Fight Club type look. And I felt like getting that shredded was just always out of my reach. I could never understand how to do it. And I was listening to all these influencers that were telling me, you have to have a good baseline about you know your, your calories and you have to track your calories. And I was like, okay, I'll track my calories. And every time I would open up my fitness pal, I would get like a mini depression. I just couldn't track my calories for longer than like a week. And so I intuitively knew that in order for me to get really, really shredded, I needed to understand how to intuitively eat just like our ancestors did. And that's what led me to make this video. And so this is actually what changed for me. I finally understood how to switch my mindset from just what's low calorie, calories in, calories out, and all this bullshit fitness advice that you get given today. That is how to intuitively eat and how to become shredded. That is honestly pretty effortless. And so what is even more important than saying calories in versus calories out is understanding how to be metabolically flexible. Metabolic flexibility is basically your body's ability, its effectiveness to use blood sugar, blood glucose, and fat as energy. And so being metabolically flexible is more important right now than calories in, calories out. And the reason for that is because if you've struggled and you, you don't like tracking your calories and you're similar to me in that you get like a mini sadness whenever you open my fitness pal, then it's extremely important to understand because if you can be ma metabolically flexible, then you will burn fat pretty effortlessly. This is why I've been able to actually be quite lazy and actually only train twice per week while still losing fat and still having energy at the same time. And so how do we actually become metabolically flexible? Well, there's a few things that you need to understand. One is insulin sensitivity. You need to understand how to become more sensitive to insulin because you can have the perfect split of fats, carbs, and proteins, and you can have the perfect diet. You can do all these things. You can take all the supplements, but if you're inherently resistant to insulin, then your body is going to store more fat, no matter how good the macros are in your cliff bar or your Instagram smoothie, your fruit smoothie. Just a little side tangent, stop blending fruit it spikes your blood sugar like crazy. Thought I'd mention that. But if you can reduce the amount of blood sugar spikes that you have in your day, then you'll, you'll notice over time that you'll slowly burn more fat more effortlessly, but you will also have more energy. This is because you're signaling more leptin, more leptin release in your brain. Leptin is the hormone that gets released and it basically says, I'm satisfied, I don't need any more food. And then ghrelin, is the hormone that gets released when you want to eat. It's like the hunger hormone. So by reducing the amount of times that you eat in your day, by reducing the amount of insulin spikes in your day, you're not signaling that hunger hormone as much. Because ghrelin, the way that the hunger hormone works is it rises with an insulin spike. This is why when you eat a can of Pringles, you want to eat like 10 packets of them because your ghrelin, you're getting hungry as you're eating them. You're not actually signaling leptin into your brain. This is why I stopped snacking because I'm not 12 years old anymore, first of all. So just stop snacking, bro. So now another thing to improve metabolic flexibility is we are going to increase our potion making skill. Now, you know, in Skyrim, when you have like the alchemy room, yep, that is going to turn into your kitchen. So there are a few herbs that I have been consuming and I have consumed over the past couple of months that have drastically increased my ability to burn fat effortlessly from being metabolically flexible. These herbs are as follows. Apple cider vinegar, rose petals, rosemary leaf, cinnamon sticks, lemon peel, and ginger. You can pick these up in bulk online for actually pretty cheap or in any local health food store that is around you. You know, those like little tea stores where you can like bulk scoop them. And the idea of these herbs is they're going to be extremely beneficial in reducing your insulin spikes and just also increasing that, that metabolic flexibility, which will signal more leptin, which will make you eat less food. The idea and the goal, at least my goal is to make my space, my living space look like an alchemy room out of Skyrim. That's when I know I'm on the right path, which actually leads me on to my next point, which is fasting, specifically intermittent fasting. This is one of the highest return on investment things that I've 
implemented into my life verbatim. Is that the right word? Anyway, you most likely know what intermittent fasting already is. It's basically just after you wake up, you're going to push back your first meal by a few few more hours than you normally would. I've been doing this quite consistently for the past two to three years. And I remember one turning point that I had with it because I used to binge eat food quite a lot. And I, I was the type of person that used to binge eat Pringles like every single day and binge eat chocolate every single day. I remember that when I started to implement a short fast in the morning after I woke up, that desire to snack, that desire for that shit food drastically decreased. It was like a light bulb in my head. I was like, wow, I really don't feel like the foods or binging on the foods anymore at all. And through learning and through slowly progressively overloading that first meal and pushing that first meal back throughout the day, I found that I just wanted to eat less. And when I did break my fast, I didn't want to break it with anything that was like shit for me. That's, this is why I really vouch for eggs as, as your first meal. So for you to actually get started with fasting, if you want to become shredded, just like I have, what you need to do is you need to progressively switch from, okay, I have breakfast. Let's say you have breakfast at 9am. You're going to start to have breakfast at 9.30am and you're going to slowly every half an hour each day for a couple of weeks, you're going to push back that first meal by half an hour every single day. You're going to slowly do this because if you just go from, let's say you wake up at 6am and you go all the way till like 2 p.m., your body probably isn't going to like that. It's not going to be used to it. So slowly implementing this is the goal. In the morning to help with the fast, use high quality salt water. So remineralized water. I use Celtic sea salt and I also drink quite a bit of black coffee with a little bit of cinnamon in there as well. If you don't like coffee, you have a mate. I find that caffeine is a really good appetite suppressor. It also keeps me focused for this work here. Now with this, I also combine fasting specifically with seasonal eating and whole food eating exclusively. So I want you to go down right now and Google seasonal eating guide and then insert the country that you live in. Look at what comes up and you'll notice that these foods are just specifically single ingredient foods that grow out of God's green earth. They grow out of mother earth. They aren't stored in plastic and they most likely aren't sold in any like shitty supermarket or budget food place. And this is your cue to start going to farmer's markets. So I started to go to this like Sunday market that's near me, not only to see all of the cute hippie girls in their sundresses getting fresh produce, but also grabbing these whole foods that are seasonal is going to support my body at that particular time of year. And it's going to be a lot easier to eat less because seasonal foods are also more nutrient dense. So for example, in summertime, mango where I live is extremely abundant and the mangoes, they're so juicy. And so when I get these mangoes, I just gouge on them and I feel full. And I feel like even though mango has, has sugar in it, I don't need to eat more because this isn't specifically about restricting calories. Remember calories in calories out is, is cool for the, the guy that, you know, has superficial desires, but we're thinking about it in more of a holistic way. Sometimes I will eat an entire packet of dates every single day. Like sometimes I'll, I'll drink a liter of raw milk. These are extremely high sugar and high dense foods, but increasing your insulin sensitivity is going to be huge because you don't have to restrict yourself with the things that are tasty. So I have a challenge for you. I want you to comment down below right now your commitment to only eating whole foods for an entire week for seven days. The ingredient in a banana is just banana. The ingredient in beef is just beef. There's no, there's nothing else in there. If you can commit to eating whole foods for just seven days, just seven days, just one week, then you can give yourself the confidence to get absolutely yoked and shredded for the summer. This is about changing your mindset from tracking calories with shitty food versus eating abundantly and intuitively eating with good food. So if you cannot commit to seven days of just whole food eating, then I got to be honest with you, bro. I think you're a little bit of a pussy. If you got some value out of this video, then I want you to go down right now and leave a like. That way this video shows up in more people's algorithms and helps more men out in the process. See you on the next one.